today we're going to talk a little bit about the accounting equation. Uh, in this chapter, the accounting equation is very important. Uh, it's kind of one of the basic things, obviously, since it's the beginning of the class, one of the basic things that we need to understand about accounting. This is the starting point. The accounting equation is assets equal liabilities plus equity. Assets, I like to just simply say, are things that we own. So let's put that down. It's what we own. Now, how do we get these assets, which could be cash, it can be supplies, buildings, machinery, equipment, computers, you know, it's all sorts of things that we own in our business. How do we get these things? Well, that's what's on the other side of our equation. We either borrowed money to get them, or equity in the company, or we've generated profits, or owners have contributed cash into the company in order to buy assets. Okay, now they don't have to contribute exactly cash, they can contribute the asset itself. But we have to keep track of things in a double system in accounting. We don't just record the asset <coughs> and not show where it came from. Okay, because we have a double system, like I said, in accounting. Now assets equal liabilities plus equity. Some examples of assets, like I said, are cash, supplies, equipment, uh, something called accounts, receivable. I'm going to abbreviate that AR, accounts receivable. Accounts receivable are when somebody purchases something from our business. If they purchase it on, from our business and they don't give us cash, they're going to owe us later. That's an account that we're going to receive later. So we, they set up an account with us and we let them buy on credit. So this is an asset because we're going to get cash. It has value to us. It is an asset. Okay. So these are some common assets. Common liabilities, probably one of the most common, are accounts payable, notes payable. Accounts payable is the opposite of an accounts receivable. It's when we buy something from another business, from another person, but we don't pay cash yet. We're doing it on account. We're going to pay them at the end of the month or in a couple months. Okay, So that means we have an account with somebody else that we have to pay up later. So that would be a liability because we owe money to somebody else. A note payable typically is when we sign an actual note with the bank or some financial institution and it's a legal document that states how much we're going to have to pay back, over what time period, uh, what the interest rate is. It gives all the terms associated with borrowing this money. So that would be a note payable. You'd have loan payables which would be the same thing. So those are common liabilities. Another common liability that we're going to talk about later in the semester are bonds. Bonds or bonds payable. And that's just borrowing money once again, but a different type of borrowing arrangement. The last item is equity. Now I'm going to put a line here because equity has several components that I want to bring out. The first component is the capital. The capital account. Now the capital account would be an owner's account. And then if the owner withdraws money, we would have less withdrawals. Okay. The capital account is just keeping track of the owner's balance in the account. The owner's balance in the account. Now this would be if it's a partnership or sole proprietorship. If it's a corporation, the terminology would be common stock. Common stock or capital stock, it's the same thing, or just stock. Okay. So we've got capital, the capital account, which if, let's assume this is your business. If you put $10,000 into this business, well, then the business has an asset of 10,000 cash. Well, we have to have something on the other side of the equation. You would have your own capital account. If your name's Mike, you'd have Mike Capital for $10,000. Cash of 10,000, and on this side, we'd have 10,000. Okay? Uh, withdrawal, well, if it's a corporation, we call that a dividend, but it's taking money out of the company. So that would be a negative because it's reducing your capital account. It's reducing the value that you contributed to the company. Well, if this is your company, any revenues that we generated would be your revenues. So that's why it's under equity, because this section is basically the owner's section of the company. So revenue would be your revenue. And remember, revenue is just like sales. Um, it's it's uh, the increase that we're getting from doing business. So it's sales of whatever product that, that we sell, whatever we do for our business. And then we would subtract out any expenses. Expenses are the costs of doing business. So if we pay wages to an employee, then that would be an expense, wage expense. 
if we buy some supplies and we've used them up, that would be supplies expense. Um, if we have to pay rent on our building, rent expense. We pay for our phone bill, phone expense. Okay, so all the expenses associated with doing business. And once again, that's a reduction in our equity. So that's why it's a negative dollar amount. Okay, so from here, <coughs> this is the basic setup that we have to be familiar with for accounting. Now, the next part, the next part is the core financial statements for the business. What are the core financial statements? Well, you're gonna have to read up on this stuff. Actually, in accounting, it's critical that you not just view these lectures that I have taped, but that you actually read through the chapter because accounting is very difficult and typically students don't just get it the first time. Typically, you've got to view the videos that I've taped and maybe a couple times, um, maybe rewind certain sections that you don't get, and definitely you need to go to the chapter. Accounting is one of the toughest courses and you need to understand all this stuff. You need to get immersed in it for the first uh, few chapters at least, if not longer. But you can't, un you can't go to chapter two unless you have a really good grasp of chapter one. And this is just a recommendation for you for the rest of the semester because you don't want to go on if you don't get this, these concepts now. It's just going to make your life even more miserable as you go on. So make sure that you get these concepts down really well, that you understand each concept as we go through it uh, on these lectures and in the chapter. Okay, so we've talked about the accounting equation. The core financial statements are the balance sheet, the income statement, I'm just gonna abbreviate that, the income statement, the statement of retained earnings, and the statement of cash flows. Hopefully, we're taping this, I think it's low enough. Um, so these are the four core financial statements. Now the balance sheet is very simple. The balance sheet is just this. It's the assets equal liabilities plus equity. This is a financial statement that we present to people inside, but mainly people outside of our company, so that people know if they want, can see if they want to invest or not in our company, so they can see what assets we have, what kind of debt we have, this is risk associated with the company, what kind of debt we have, and what kind of owner equity we have in the company. It's used by banks to see if they want to lend money to us. It's used by potential owners to see if they want to invest in this company. The income statement is a very simple statement. It's just showing our profits. So it's just showing the revenues minus the expenses. Revenues minus expenses, that gets us our net income, which would be the income statement. The statement of retained earnings, well, retained earnings is for a corporation, okay? Retained earnings is for a corporation, and it's the, the, the uh, profits retained within the company. So it would be your net income, so it's basically your revenues, expenses, minus your dividends, okay? But this is retained, so it's year after year after year. So if we had net income last year, uh, I'm gonna make this simple, 10,000, and a dividend of 3,000, Okay, that gives us 7,000. Let's say this was a brand new company, so we had no retained earnings the previous year. Okay, so then we'd have $7,000. Okay, that's retained earnings. Next year, our retained earnings would start with that 7,000, and we'd add the current year net income less the current year dividends. So it just keeps going forward year after year after year. It doesn't close out, it doesn't zero out, it just keeps going forward and forward and forward, hopefully increasing, getting a positive retained earnings. Okay, and the last one is the cash flow statement. That's one that we're not going to concentrate too much on in this class. Uh, you're not going to have any homework problems on that. Um, but I do want you to know that the cash flow statement is a critical financial statement that gives a lot of important information. It's a little bit difficult to prepare. Um, it's, it's actually a fairly simple financial statement. It's just showing all the cash coming in and going out. But there are different methods in preparing this financial statement, which make it a little bit difficult. Okay, so make sure you study hard in this chapter. It's a great chapter. Make sure you go over and over this stuff. You probably have to read the chapter at least two, if not three times, because it has that much information. Good luck.